In today's episode of Trash Panda Garage, we're going to figure out if I screwed up the Midland Mobile GMRS radio install in our Chevy Colorado. I'm pretty sure that we did, but I think we can make it better. Keep watching to find out. Now, before we get too far in this video, I should clarify that we run a Midland Mobile MXT 115 GMRS radio in the center console of our Colorado. We also added a Midland Ghost antenna. We chose to mount ours on the hood, which I'm guessing is a fairly common mounting location. Midland even sells uh, ditch light extension brackets for this purpose. I should say that I've had no issues communicating with friends on the trail who are within line of sight, but I don't really know how much range I'm getting out of this antenna setup with a 15 watt radio. So I decided to pick up an SWR meter without getting too sciencey. SWR stands for standing wave ratio and is a way to test a particular antenna's power transmission efficiency. I didn't realize this until after the meter arrived, but much to the dismay of my local postman, I did have to hop on Amazon and order some SMA to UHF adapter connectors. With the extra connectors and a short chunk of coax cable extension, I was able to connect the meter in between my radio and antenna. Now before we get too far, let's talk about what we can do to improve the antenna setup if our SWR reading is too high. Thankfully Midland has some antenna tips and tricks listed on their website at midlandusa.com. All right, first tip, to maximize range, mount your antenna as high as possible. Well, we're not getting much height out of this ghost antenna with its current mounting location. All right, next tip, to properly ground your antenna, ensure the mounting surface is bare metal without powder coating or paint. Additional antenna grounding is not necessary with GMRS, but may help overall performance. So this is probably our first big installation mistake. I mounted this antenna to a ditch light bracket on the passenger side of the hood, but made no effort to grind away any of the paint or powder coat where the antenna mounts or where the cable attaches to the antenna through the mounting hole. So since the Midland website says that adding an electrical ground may be helpful, we're gonna add a ground strap to the antenna that ties into the truck body. If we go back to the antenna tips and tricks page, there's another tip that says, always avoid tightly coiling or bundling any excess antenna cable. Now what's funny is I remember back when I installed the CB radio in a previous vehicle that you're not supposed to coil the excess coax cable. I did it anyway when I installed this radio thinking I would go back and fix it later and clearly I didn't. If you go back to that tips and tricks page, it also suggests you route your coax cable away from any power cables or ignition wires to limit interference. To limit electrical interference in this test, I just decided to remove the coax cable from under the dash and run it across the top of the hood. That should allow me to get the highest possible SWR reading on this antenna. I'll play around with coiling the cable and uncoiling the cable to see what kind of effect it has on our reading. So I wired the meter in between the radio and the antenna. As a bit of an experiment, I started by placing the ghost antenna on the ground and then keyed the mic to get our results. We got a near perfect SWR reading of 1.01 to one, which means the physical ground works out as a pretty good RF ground plane, uh, basically a horizontal conductive surface that aids in radio wave reflection. I should add that all of these readings were collected with the radio set to low power and the channel set to 16 as SWR results can vary across frequencies. Now, I probably don't need to say this, but results may vary. These readings are specific to my antenna, my radio, my coax cable setup. So after running the test a bunch of different times with different variations, I can say that a coiled coax cable did increase my SWR. The highest reading I have was 1.60 to one with a coiled coax. And even though it doesn't create a seemingly perfect ground plane, I think this antenna and a ditch light bracket can work. There were a couple of times with an uncoiled coax cable that I was able to get a near perfect 1.01 to one SWR reading. My final takeaway is that an electrical ground strap doesn't seem to hurt and actually may show a small improvement in SWR uh, if you don't have a good ground contact between your antenna and whatever it's mounted to. So I think the next step for me is to actually order a longer antenna that's gonna create opportunities for longer range. We'll cover the installation of that antenna in a future video, but I'm hoping that what we learned from this experiment will allow us to install that new antenna in a manner in which it can operate more efficiently and be less subject to interference. That's all we've got time for today. As always, thanks for watching Trash Panda Garage. And until the next time, get out there, build something.